Hello guys, uh, a very good evening. Hope I am audible and visible. Sorry for a slight delay. Uh, just give me a second. Just... Okay, so let's start. Again, welcome back uh, to an academy. So this class is primarily for postgraduates. I'm going to discuss four different cases today. Uh, all of them will be in the fibroblastic lesion might be related to soft tissue or in some particular organs right so we already had a preliminary discussion on soft tissue pathology in the first uh, we had just an overall approach we did uh, see about lipoblast uh, adipocytic tumors for the past two classes and then we did see about nodular fasciitis and everything right in the last class hello Vivek can any one of you uh, answer this to this question? We did see a cell, a reactive condition of uh, soft tissue where we had ganglion-like cells. Can any one of you tell me what disease is that? Just to recollect uh, and see your memory how good it is. Anyone? None? Same here, Vivek. Okay. I will give you a hint. It was discussed after nodular fasciitis in the last class. Okay, fine. In case of proliferative fasciitis and proliferative myositis, we would see your uh, your ganglion-like cells in addition to the fibroblast and myofibroblast lesions. Fine. Okay. So don't uh, forget things what we see in the classes. I would ask you to download the PPT from the Anacademy app, and you can keep it forever just accumulate them group them into different uh, organ systems and please keep seeing them because these are very classical findings if you remember that definitely you will not struggle in diagnosing a soft tissue lesion in future because soft tissue is a very very vast subject and hope we can dissect it into tiny bits and pieces and learn a little bit more fine okay on that note today uh, as usual if you are a postgraduate if any undergrad asked to spread the word about an academy there are lots of free classes and lots of free tests available and if they want to subscribe, they can subscribe to any of the uh, batches available. Um, with If they have any code, great. If they don't have a code, you can ask them to use Path of Cups. Fine. Okay, so let's start today's class. Again, I do want a bilateral discussion. It is never going to be unilateral. If it is unilateral, it's not useful for both of us. Right? So we'll try to uh, learn. Uh, so I will show you a few images. I do want to come to you. Uh, Vivek, that's a very vague question. We are uh, see, uh, seeing if you're a postgraduate in pathology, we are going organ system wise. Uh, breast, we have already dealt with some place. Please have a look at them. And if you have any doubt, do let me know. Fine. Okay. So, this is a f first case. So we have a 32 year old lesion in the arm. Right. I just want you to look at the images. I'll show you the images. I just want you to comment whatever you see in the image. I do want comments. Uh, without comments, I'm not going to the next slide. It's just going to be four cases, so I want your utmost importance and your concentration. If you're a first year postgraduate, it's completely fine. You can start off commenting whether it is an uh, epithelial lesion or a mesenchymal lesion of that sort. Just simple ones. Right? Okay. Okay. Good to see you, Kratri. Right, so you have said that it's a mixoid lesion. Okay. I do accept it's a mixoid lesion. Any, any others want to comment on this power? Definitely, I'm going to go to higher power. Anyone else? Yes, is it? It is mixoid. Okay. If you don't want to comment on this power, I'll go to a few more power. Okay, a little bit higher power. Vague story form, few fascicles. Good, Adil. Yes, we do have fascicles. It's one other part of a lesion. Uh, do we accept with the same two findings? Whatever you guys have said, mixoid areas and fascicles. Do everyone agree? Do everyone concur to that finding? I think there are definitely mixoid areas, uh, though I don't have a pool of mixoid area, there's more of a background mixoid area, plus I do have lots of short fascicles or a few vague, vaguely storyform pattern. Uh, will I call this exactly a storyform pattern like you see in case of a five, uh, your uh, uh, DFSP? Can I fit this into a classical storyform pattern of DFSP, yes or no? I think that's not much difficult to comment. It's bland looking cells, great Adil, a good observation. No, right? It's not like a perfect story form pattern seen in DFSP. But like Adil said that there's a little bit of vague story form pattern and maybe a few fascicles there, right? Great. 
okay still more higher power what do you see in this image you can comment on the cellularity of this thing you can comment on the ATP are present or not everything on this image is there any ATP is there uh, any mitosis is there anything abnormal in this image perfect you do see collagen definitely good amount of collagen is seen which which is kind of making the uh, entire lesion little bit hypocellular right it's more of admix collagen no ATP obviously little bit of spindle shaped cells here and there right okay fine perfect so these are the uh, things given for me and it's a lesion in the hand do you guys want to uh, go ahead and go with any diagnosis if you can comment on any diagnosis with the above findings uh, you guys said everything whatever I require you just have to tabulate all of them and give a complete diagnosis there are mixoid areas there are spindle shaped cells there are few fascicular arrangement no ATP, no mitosis no atypical mitosis lots of collagen background mixoid area seen it's a superficial lesion I'll just give you an extra information to comment on any any possibility since I, we are discussing in soft tissue pathology I hope you must have gone through and zinger no okay I'll, I'll tell you one more thing I'll show you one more image uh, this is actually the CD 34 of this patient positive or negative is it positive or negative okay Adil has gone with low grade fibromyxoid sarcoma uh, Deshmukh has gone with neurofibromas fine the CD34 positive negative it is positive right so Deshmukh uh, if CD34 is positive and let me say that this patient is ascended negative still you want to have neurofibroma in the differential diagnosis you won't keep definitely neurofibroma in differential diagnosis with this amino profile right okay I'll go with the word work Quadri said angiofibroma uh, did you see much of vascularity there? There's not much of vascularity, right? There's not much of vascularity. Okay, going back to low grade fibromyxoid sarcoma, when there's a fibromyxoid sarcoma, uh, any myxoid sarcomas, be it your myxoid liposarcoma or a low grade fibromyxoid sarcoma, there should be one classical pattern seen. What was the appearance, if you remember, we saw in low grade liposarcoma, uh, in a myxoid liposarcoma? Mixoid liposarcoma should have this finding for sure. Apart from lipoblast, we did read a finding in mixoid liposarcoma. What is the vascular pattern in mixoid liposarcoma? If you remember, we did read the first class, same thing in the first class of your soft tissue pathology as well. Can I say any case of mixoid liposarcoma should have plexiform capillaries? Perfect. Great, Elka. Blood vessels, chicken wire, or your plexiform capillaries this image what we saw we saw quite a few image did you see plexiform or chicken wire capillaries was it present we didn't have it right so it's neither my low grade fibromyxoid sarcoma any fibromyxoid sarcoma should have that i didn't have that amount of capillaries as well right it was not there right so the diagnosis here uh, if you have heard about the disease you will definitely make a diagnosis if you have not heard about the disease i just want you want to discuss this just for to avoid a differential diagnosis, to avoid a mistake, right? This is a case of a superficial acral fibrosarcoma, fibromyxoma, fine? But this is a bit rare, but what is more important for me is, this might be mistaken for whatever differential diagnosis you gave. See, low-grade fibromyxoma is not a, a differential diagnosis for the simple reason, most of these lesions, like the name says, will be in the superficial location. In the first chapter of soft tissue pathology, we read anything superficial, in soft tissue will be benign or malignant will most likely be benign right so any superficial mass I'm not going to think of any sarcomatous lesion right at the same time where it can be differentiated is like uh, Bipet said that there is a possibility of a neural lesion right why Bipet called it a neural lesion is this I'm not sure how many of you observe that can I say that the cells are a bit wavy there is a good catch by the way Vivek, right so the cells are definitely wavy right it kind of gives a neural look right can it be a mixoid neurofibroma with the background of neurofibrous nature neurofibromas do have lots of cellularity differences 
and it can be a myxoid neurofibroma as well right so uh, one of the differential diagnoses myxoid neurofibroma it has to be differentiated right so there are quite a few differential diagnoses uh, one main differential diagnosis which i want to consider is dfsp because dfsp is also superficial yeah it doesn't show buckley but as i said adil it's a bit wavy so kind of might be mistaken that's all right so dfsp is a very very common differential diagnosis because of the location superficial one few pointers which will uh, help me to not to diagnose confuse with dfsps dfsp will have a very tight cellular pattern it will be extremely tight and cellular and you'll have a perfect perfect story formation i am sure you must have seen at least one case of dfsp in your uh, residency it will be perfectly story formed that's why i asked you initially is it an exact story form appearance like a dfsp it is not don't go with cellularity uh, whenever you see in case of dfsp am i right in saying that most of them will be very much cellular most of the dfsp you you must have seen are very must be cellular right i don't want you to go with cellularity initially because i want you to keep cellularity a little bit lower down the order because there's a variant called as myxoid dfsp in a myxoid dfsp again the cellularity will be a bit lesser right so cellularity is not the way to differentiate uh, your superficial fi acral fibromyxoma from a dfsp go with the story form pattern even if the cellularity are less the story form pattern will be still be appear and it will be all tight here it was loose it is uh, separated by collagen that will not be there right one pitfall which might come is immunohistochemistry what was ihc we saw here it was cd34 right so am i right in saying that your dfsp will also be cd34 positive is that right yes dfsps will be cd34 positive right that's a big problem for me here so cd34 will be positive in dfsp as well so again my ihc is not for diagnosis any time ihc is to rule out my differential diagnosis you have to be strong in your histomorphology this doesn't fit into dfsp even though cd34 is positive don't uh, think that it might might be dfsp because they don't have a story form pattern right if at all you have a doubt between a myxoid dfsp and a story form pattern there are uh, and your uh, superficial uh, fibromyxoma there are few markers i am not sure how many of your hospitals have this apolipoprotein d this will be positive in myxoid dfsp or dfsp and it will be negative in superficial angel uh, acral fibromyxoma if at all you want you can do in chromosome analysis okay these are used for cases only when you struggle for the diagnosis this the basic things are the one which is going to help you in a, on a long run right story form pattern tight cellularity not there most unlikely to be a dfsp and dfsp is bit rare in the acral region acral in the sense your digits your hands and foot so it's a bit rare in the hands and foot so again uh, site wise also it comes lower on the mid differential diagnosis right and like vivek said that one of my important differential diagnoses and myxoid neurofibroma right like uh, exactly what adil said that the spindle cells might be like a neural appearance right but your buckley might not be there every neural fibroma will have shredded carat like collagen when we go to neural lesions i will ex explain you what is a carat like collagen mean this collagen was present in this lesion as well but it's not a classical collagen what you see in your neural lesions fine and obviously the ascendant staining ascendant will be positive in a myxoid neurofibromas if you have a doubt for a neurofibroma you can go for ascendant it's not a very difficult stain most of your hospitals will have if it is positive it's a myxoid neurofibroma not your uh, superficial acral uh, angiofibroma angiomyxoma sorry fine okay fine go to the next question the next uh, case if you have any doubts here do let me know if not we'll go to the next case it's it's a bit interesting one i just want you to comment on it i don't want you to come to any diagnosis just comment on it comment like you commented in your first year of j residency right each and everything whatever you see comment it's a lesion in on arm of a 1 year old kid low power again if you are online i want you to comment on every uh, image you see it's fine if you make mistakes but description is what is going to help you to come to a diagnosis okay asma has gone with started with a comment saying it's heterogeneous definitely it's heterogeneous right so looking at this image uh heterogeneous in the sense i think the uh, adipocytic areas the fibrocytic areas right 
you have an adipositic area and also you have lots of uh, fibroblastic area, heterogeneous appearance, right? So whenever you have in a low power two component admixed, what will be your first possibility? You will think of a benign lesion or a malignant lesion. In general, we generally go and think of an infiltrative pathology, right? Because it could be an adipositic lesion with desmoplasia or a fibroblastic lesion infiltrating my adipocytes, right? In general, it's malignant. But I don't want you to think of that always. But yes, keep in mind, it's malignant. But my only problem in calling them a malignant is you have a one-year-old kid. Do you think you will see sarcomas in a one-year-old kid, in an infant? We generally don't, right? So age is also very, very important for me. I don't see a sarcoma in a one-year-old kid, right? So let's see what it is a little bit on a higher power, fine? Next image, I want you to comment whatever you see. Each and every component, what you see here, do make a comment. Try to make a comment on it. Then let's come to a diagnosis. Anyone? Try to comment on whatever component you see here. I hope it is clear. Okay, I'll start. I'll give you leading questions. You answer me them. Uh, the adipositic component here. Uh, are they normal or abnormal? Yes, they Priya, we do see spindle cells. Pleomorphism. Fine. I'll come back to that other thing. Fibroblasts are seen. Definitely. Is the adipositic component normal? The adipositic component looks more or less normal, right? Perfect. So now let me come to spindle cell component. In the spindle cell component, I'm see uh, Aditi commented on pleomorphism. I do accept to some extent uh, it's kind of pleomorphic, but when I say pleomorphism, the word pleomorphism means I need to have cells of different size and shape admixed with the main lesion. But here, can I say that whatever I'm highlighting here has totally a different morphology compared to this part, which has a bit of a different morphology, right? So can I say the uh, abnormal cells, which most likely looks, is separate from a normal looking bland fibroblast? Is that correct? Right. Uh, this is not how a pleomorphism will look, right? You must have seen your leomyosarcomas, fibrosarcomas. When I see pleomorphism, you will see a bang on a big cell in between the mass, right? But here what it looks is, I'm kind of having a two different population, one on the top and one bottom. The top looks a bit different from the bottom, right? We'll go to a few more images. Again, this is almost the same thing in bit of a higher power. Whatever we saw in the previous thing, have we confirmed that the lower half of this field looks bit of hyperchromatic compared to the upper half, which is bit more uh, looking bland? Yes. Okay. Uh, you want to make any diagnosis, Bill Chris Kadri? Great, you have read, that's very, very good. Okay, perfect. Since you, both two of you have commented, one of you have commented as triphasic component, great. Other one has commented as an uh, infantile fibromatosis hamartoma, right, perfect. So if you know that uh, uh, entity called as a fibrous hamartoma or a fibroma of an infancy is there, there are two things here. Can I, can, do all of you agree that this part is completely normal? Can I say that the above part is completely normal? It is definitely normal, right? So this below part, I do have a little bit of more cyto, more nuclear material and a little bit of less cytoplasm. Can I call this kind of an um, immature tissue? Is it possible for me to call this an immature tissue? Yes. This is how an immature mesenchyme looks. Okay. So perfectly an immature mesenchyme. That's how it looks, fine. It's an immature mesenchyme. You must have looked at many, many immature uh, cells, especially the neural tissue in your teratomas. You must have learned about them. An immature mesenchyme will not be exactly spindled out, a plump spindle cell with little bit of less cytoplasm. That's how an immature mesenchyme looks, right? I do have a mature mesenchyme here. I have an immature mesenchyme here, the second one. And the third component is this. I do have adipositic component as well. Like Kadri said that it's a classical triphasic lesion. I do have a mature component. I'm having an immature component here 
and I'm having an adipose tissue component here, right? So when you have these three phases, it's kind of a spot up. You should not miss this. Again, age is one of the important thing which helps me to come to a diagnosis. This is a fibrous tumor of infancy or a fibrous hamartoma of infancy. Uh, whatever it is, both can be used. It's a fibrous tumor or fibrous hamartoma because I'm sure you must have read from Robbins itself. Hamartoma is a benign lesion. So it's an older term is a fibrous hamartoma. The newer terms are fibrous tumors of infancy, fine. But this is important so that you don't miss it for differential things. The main thing, the main purpose of putting this case is initial thought of pleomorphism. It's not pleomorphism. It's totally a different component. I have three phases of the component. What your WHO says in the essential criteria is it should be organoid. If you someone did comment on that it is nodular, right? It is organoid, right? Nodular and those organoid. And triphasic morphology. And you can have any different uh, amount of the three things. It could be either fibroblastic rich, myofibroblastic rich, or a primitive mesenchyme rich and a mature adipose tissue. I need to see all three components. It's not that only one should be more, other should be less. All three components can be there in varying proportions. When you see all three components in an infant, don't think of a, of a pleomorphic sarcomatous lesion. It's just an immature primitive mesenchyme and your diagnosis fibrous hematoma of your infancy, right? Good two of you were able to pick it up. Great. See, uh, the purpose is I will tell you what I'm going to take a day or before. Please read something of that. See, when you read something and if you're able to apply in a case, that's the best thing what you can do, right? See, uh, Adil, uh, am I right in saying that uh, I do use the term organoid appearance in carcinoid? Can I use the term organoid appearance when you see a patient with carcinoid? Yes. Definitely you will use, right? So in carcinoid, what we see is nests of tumor cells. Right? I see nests of tumor cells in a carcinoid, which we you call it organoid pattern, right? So in other words, when it comes to a spindle cell neoplasm, we don't call it nests of tumor cells, we call it nodules, right? I'll just go up a little bit. I have to erase this a little bit. It's kind of nodular, right? The primitive mesenchyme is a bit away and the normal mature blanched fibroblast is a bit nodular in appearance, right? This is what I meant by the, uh, this is what WHO describes as an, or, an organoid appearance. It's kind of a nest of lesion, right? An organoid appearance or a nodular appearance like someone described it, fine? I hope it's clear, Adil. Great. Okay, we'll go to the next uh, question. This is a lesion from the breast, right? So it might be a little bit away from your sarcomatous lesion. So when it comes to breast, uh, you have lots of spindle shape pathology, right? So keep all of them in mind. And then I just want a differential diagnosis. We'll see if we can come to a conclusion with few marker studies we're gonna do, right? It's a 40 year old person with a breast lesion. Any, it's a true cut biopsy, obviously, right? Any comments? Whatever comes to your mind. No? Okay, cellular, hypocellular, normal, malignant, any comments? Okay, fibro fatty core, fine. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Uh, breast will have a fibro fatty core, right? The fibrous component is a bit predominant compared to the fatty component. I hope you agree that. Fine. Okay, fascicles, short vague fascicles. Fine. We'll go to the higher power. Okay, in this image, do you want to make any kind of comment? Yes, it is a bit cellular. That's more important for us. Hypercellular, yes. Can you can anyone describe the cells? How they look? Abhishek, carcinoma in stu. Uh, I would not think at least in this thing. Yeah, like Aditi said that uh, we do see a good amount of collagen, right? Uh, Ropey or not, we'll come to it. Increase in cellularity and definitely there are lots of collagen seen. Add mix with few adipose tissues in the top uh, corner, right? We'll go and have a look at other places. Almost similar, right? Okay, plump myofibroblast like. Um, yeah, it could be a plump cell, it could be a myofibroblast like because the first 
uh, chapter of soft tissue we did read about uh, the difference between a fibroblast and a myofibroblast if you remember that yes it kind of looks like a plum my myofibroblast i do agree that any other comments in this image no other comments or is the same as a previous image okay one more image uh, vascular spaces uh, i'll go back to that Adhi. it's not much of vascular spaces uh, see when i see vascularity vascularity will be intrinsic component of all, many lesion right i don't have exact vascular spaces here right i do have plump myofibroblast like areas perfect i do have collagen here multiple places i do have collagen here right a little bit purple cytoplasm okay amphophilic cytoplasm okay with that okay though you have seen many cells none of you have commented on the cytology of the cells is it normal is it pleomorphic do you see mitosis because you have to look for everything right See, when you see any cellular lesion, such an amount of cellularity in a breast tissue, you need to comment on all other things. It is pleomorphic. Is it bland? They are more or less bland spindle shaped cell. Like Deshmukh said that there is no atypical mitosis. I won't call this particularly hyperchromatic barbicle because uh, see, when it's hyperchromasia, when it comes to a spindle shaped lesion, the nucleus itself will look very very plump it's not so big right i would say it's mostly bland cells no mitotic figures great right again in this image what you're seeing is predominantly collagen right again uh Ashavari, i wouldn't call it an uh hyperchromatic nuclei right so with these findings two of you have nailed the diagnosis it's most likely a myofibroblastoma right it's not indian uh, dental cube it's most likely a myofibroblastoma right we did markers. Uh, the one marker which we did was Desmin. Desmin is positive or negative here, at least in this image. Desmin is definitely positive, right? It's kind of strongly positive as well, right? It's a completely positive Desmin. Desmin will be positive in myofibroblastoma because of the myo component there. Definitely it's positive. Desmin is especially used is, uh, for the only reason that breast has lots of specialized stroma and lots of stromal lesion. Not every stromal lesion will be positive for Desmin. Only when lesion acquires a myo component, it's going to be positive for Desmin, right? Perfect. Again, this is CD34. Can I say this also is positive? This is also definitely positive, right? We didn't do Vimentin because we know that Vimentin will be positive. Few other uh, markers what we did, I will comment on them as well. Ascended was negative in this patient, right? And uh, CK was negative in the patient. Okay, these are the few other things which we did, right? And it's a classical case of a myofibroblastoma, right? One thing which none of you commented, I was insisting that multiple times this is a breast biopsy. Whenever you have a breast biopsy, one of the important thing you have to look for is, did you have any glandular element? None of you commented on that. Is it important to comment on the glandular element? Yes or no? Is it important to comment or not? I showed you quite a few images here. In none of the images you saw a glandular element, right? You have to comment on the glandular element. See, when I'm having a lesion without a glandular element, it gives me confidence to call a stromal pathology. Because is it possible a metaplastic carcinoma of breast can have a completely spindle shaped lesion? Yes, it is possible, right? So whenever you see a breast lesion, you have to comment on the glandular element, you have to comment on the epithelium, the tucked lobule if they are present or not, because commenting on that itself takes a, quite a few diagnoses from me, fine? Okay, uh, there are quite a few differential diagnoses. Di diagnose here is myofibroblastoma. I just want you to understand the few differential diagnoses which is important to consider whenever you're seeing a patient with a myofibroblastoma, right? The first one, there is something called as fibromatosis of breast. I'm just going to tell you the salient points which help you to differentiate. I will not tell you that ill circumscribe, well circumscribe, the classical points. Fibromatosis, you'll have epithelial components present. 
that's a very very classical findings in fibromatosis and fibromatosis is just fibroblast no myofibroblast which means they'll have a bit of a scan cytoplasm because one of the classical difference between fibroblast and myofibroblast is the abundant cytoplasm that will not be there which means it kind of looks more cellular fine can i say that uh, nodular fasciitis can happen in breast tissue it can right so nodular fasciitis is also common in breast tissue in breast whenever it's a nodular fasciitis one of the important things is the mixoid change they'll have lots of abundant mixoid change do remember that in mind and nodular fasciitis is a reactive tissue so what will happen to mitotic count will you have mitosis in nodular fasciitis definitely you'll have mitosis there will be very good amount of mitosis in nodular fasciitis that's important we did discuss nodular fasciitis we did see nodular fasciitis in detail uh, so can any one of you tell the pattern in nodular fasciitis nodular fasciitis is a reactive condition i did talk about a little bit about nodular fasciitis i said let's say that it's a uh, tumor or a lesion which grows from multiple different directions so it grows from here 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 they have long fascicles or short fascicles uh, so nation yes hyper hypercellular area they have classically c c shaped or s shaped very short fascicles right there are very very short fascicles that's again to be considered in nodular fasciitis that won't be seen in a myofibroblastoma it's it's a proper neoplasm i won't have that fine so nation and short fascicles perfect few other differential diagnosis can for me can be a schwannomas schwannomas can be differential diagnosis neural lesions can be differential diagnosis your leiomyoma can be differential diagnosis schwannoma or leiomyoma what helps me is the markers this patient was sn red negative so all neural lesion was ruled out the reason why we did sn red is again uh, neural lesions can also have your uh, collagen the ropey carrot like cut collagen we'll see them when we come to that but marker will definitely help us with differential diagnosis we didn't do an sma here because it didn't look like a smooth muscle right and uh, none of you commented that it looked like a cigar shaped nuclei it's not going to look like a smooth muscle i'm not going to have a problem if at all i have a problem i'm going to use this fine the most important thing what i want you to remember is ignore this this is a description of myofibroblastoma metaplastic carcinoma of breast that's very very important see metaplastic carcinoma is a possibility because it can differentiate to any different condition it could be completely a sarcomatous area alone right in a metaplastic carcinoma if you saw this case tell me what are the pointers against a metaplastic carcinoma of breast in this particular case what are pointers you look for in metaplastic carcinoma of breast which did fit into a case you saw the case so you have to comment on that the first one will our metaplastic carcinomas uh, low grade tumors or high grade tumors plant cells perfect pleomorphism and is an extremely high grade tumor right metaplastic carcinoma is definitely high grade tumor so definitely the first possibility for me is the plant cells here the cells were plant metaplastic carcinoma will never be plant it will be definitely visible you will have the mitosis you will have the pleomorphism you will have everything ah okay so that is one of the thing for metaplastic carcinoma second thing i told you for very particular reason cytokeratin was negative so can i say in a metaplastic carcinoma keratin will be positive and we'll have epithelial component in metaplastic carcinoma yes is my second possibility my epithelial component bar ck possibility again leads me towards a metaplastic carcinoma right so these are two important pointers to differentiate from a metaplastic carcinoma right okay i am not going into a primary sarcoma of a breast one it is extremely rare the second possibility is primary sarcoma will also be very very atypical it will not be bland like this right myofibroblastoma is a very common lesion in the breast uh, often mistaken for something else i don't want you to mistake it for anything else just one more last differential diagnosis for this patient with myofibroblastoma is pash have you seen case of pash you must have at least read, read about pash right pseudo angiomatous stromal hyperplasia you must have read about pash right tell me what was different in this image from pash this is one classical finding in pash which is not seen here
any classical finding. Cellularity, uh, Adil, cellularity, can you complete the cellularity? Yes, cellularity is definitely a clue for me. Uh, one patch will have uh, sit like spaces, fine. Anything else? Pash is pseudo angiometer stromal hyperplasia, right? Slit like phase is fine, but I want a particular thing in Pash. Pash will be seen in the specialized stroma of the breast or in the normal stroma of the breast. Breast has two stroma. Okay, I'll take whatever Alka said that. I'll have classical cellular and hypocellular areas. Pash is formed from the specialized stroma or a normal stroma of the breast. Pash is from the specialized stroma, right? So can I say every specialized stroma will be seen surrounding the TDLU? That's the most important thing. The hyper and hypercellular area and especially the cellular area will be surrounding the TDLU. That's very, very important. You need to see the epithelial elements. You'll have multiple epithelial elements surrounding the epithelial elements alone. I'll have a hyperplasia. Other place, little bit outside, I'll have hypocellular areas because just then specialized stromal lesion. It's not the normal stroma of the breast. The specialized breast parenchyma and stromal lesion, right? This is extremely, extremely important for PASH. The reason why PASH might be a very good differential diagnosis here is the blandness. PASH is not uh, very pleomorphic. It will be bland only. Collagen, you might mistake of, in a core biopsy. Luckily, we got a good amount of core. If you don't get the collagenized areas, you might mistake it for PASH. That's why very, very important to comment on the epithelial component of any breast lesion. Whenever a breast lesion comes, it's both epithelium and stroma, both has to be commented. Don't comment on only one component alone and leave it, fine. Okay. Okay, we saw about uh, myofibroblastoma, right? Okay, I'll go to the next case. Now, it's a, it's a pretty easy one. I hope you will get it. It's a 40-year-old perineal lesion, right? We'll go to it. Comment on this. It's a pretty straightforward one. Comment on the findings here. It's a low power image. Again, I want you to guys to comment. It's okay if you're wrong. Anyone wants to comment? Okay, we'll start with the easy icebreaker. What's happening here? Our technician should change the blade, right? None of you want to comment? What's happening there? What artifact is that? We'll start with the easy one at least. Great. Okay, uh, let me take both of whatever Aditi as well as uh, uh, Barbie girl said. So can I say that this lesion has both hyper and hypocellular areas? It does have both hyper and hypocellular areas. Great. Right? That's my first finding here. I do have areas of little bit more cellularity here. I do have a little bit less cellularity, hypocellular areas here, right? I do have alternating hypo areas. Great. Perfect. Next. Comment on this image. Anything which comes to your mind? Nothing. There's one prominent finding in this image, uh, easily picked up on a low power. Uh, no, Abhishek, this is not a breast lesion, this is a lesion in the perineum. Okay, what are these? What are these? It's very prominent, right? Perfect. So whatever Adil said is important. My adipose tissue component is extremely admixed in the lesion. Yes. Uh, GD, this is not a breast lesion. This is a perineal lesion. I think you guys have missed the history. This is a perineal lesion, not a lesion in the breast. Right? I do have hyper hypercellular areas and I do have lots of adipose cytic lesion mixed, admixed with that. Fine. Okay. Higher power. Comment on this. There are quite a few findings here. I want you to pick up all the findings, uh, especially I I'm looking for two findings. If you tell me the two findings, that should be more than enough for me. The two important findings here are 
I'll go to more higher power, but still in this power also you should be able to pick up both the findings. Anyone? You can pick up things on lower power, but definitely on higher power I want you to pick up things. Okay, uh, do you guys agree with whatever Ashawari as well as Aditi said? Is there a little bit more vascularity in this lesion? Yes, vessels, vessels, vessel, vessel, vessel. There are lots of vessels, right? There are lots of vessels, right? Good amount of vessel. Okay, that's my first finding. My second finding. If you cover this, both the findings, your diagnosis is almost sorted. What's the second finding? Okay, I'll go to the next image. Tell me what's the second finding. The first finding, like you guys said, it's correct. I do have abundant vascularity. There are lots of vessels here. What's the second finding? It's striking, it's there on you, it's staring at you. <sighs> Do you want to call it mixoid? No asthma, it's not an angiolipoma. The second finding helps you to tell it's not an angiolipoma. Okay, do you see collagen? Perfect, right? That's good amount of collagen. Yes. Great. If it's an angiolipoma, collagen has no role there, right? So I'm having a good amount of collagen here. Okay. Now comment on these cells here. Comment on these cells. Are they spindled or not? I'm going to ask you like yes or no questions. Are they spindled or not? They are not spindled, right? They are not exactly spindled, right? They are kind of uh, round, maybe a little bit of an, uh, sorry, maybe a little bit of an epithelial appearance. It's not spindled, right? So the lesion, whatever cell we are discussing here is secreting collagen and it's not spindled. If a cell has to secrete collagen, I have only two possibilities, either an uh, fibroblast or a myofibroblast. Adipose tissue cannot, other things cannot secrete collagen. I do have lots of collagen, I have lots of blood vessels, right? And let's assume, I'm just giving you a hint that it's a bit oval in some places. So it's not an exact thin fibroblast. It's a bit altered appearance, so it's a myofibroblast. So can you combine all the components what you saw here and tell me? That's my diagnosis. If you combine all the components, your diagnosis is uh, straightforward. You told all the components, I just want you to combine them and give me a diagnosis. It's an angiomyofibroblastoma. Okay? An angiomyofibroblastoma is an important lesion which comes especially in the perineum, the vulval vaginal region, right? It's, it's a very, very easy diagnosis. You picked up all the components. See, if you are able to pick up all the components, one half, that's a difficult half is already done, picking up the findings. If you are not able to come to a diagnosis, which means theoretically you are not a bit strong, that's all. Read more. You read more, you remember all the entity, definitely you can put into place. If you want to become a good pathologist, you have to be, be a bookworm. You have to read more. Right? Please do read more. That's the only thing which is going to support you till you practice, till you report, right? Angio, you said, myofibro you did, but still you picked up collagen, you picked up the epithelial cells, has to be myofibro. I'm going to compare it on angiomyofibroblastoma, right? So, uh, this is a description of angiomyofibroblastoma. Uh, ignore this. You'll have your scattered bundles of collagen, right? It was hypo and hypocellarias. That's the first thing what you picked up in the image. Like it said, it's not all, always spindled out. It can be ovoid, it can be epithelial, multiple things. And the most important thing is this. I said that there will be lots of fat admixed in the lesion. That's a very classical findings in your angiomyofibroblastoma. The only, there are a few differential diagnoses here. Uh, we know about myofibroblastoma. So I'm just going to extrapolate angiomyofibroblastoma to a normal myofibroblastoma. And I'm going to ask you the IHC. You're going to tell me whether it be positive or negative. First IHC is Desmin. In angiomyofibroblastoma, Desmin will be positive or negative. You know about myofibroblastoma, you saw that and you know about the features. 
positive or negative decimal. Myofibroblastomas were decimal positive, so this also will be positive for decimal. SME positive or negative. It's angiomyofibroblastomas, right? So it will be positive, decimal will be positive. SMEs will be negative, right? SMA will be negative because it's not a smooth muscle differentiation. Decimal will be positive, not any mature smooth muscle, mature marker will be negative, right? Okay, fine your cd34 cd34 will especially be positive in the areas of the vascularity focal wherever they have more vascularity definitely is going to be positive there fine why mental will be positive in most of the cases interesting finding in angiomyofibroblastomas is erpr see this is stromal lesion of the cervix of the perineal areas right any stromal lesion in the perineal area will they be erpr positive Yes, they will be positive for ER and PR. Okay, keep this in mind. Though it's a stromal lesion, uh, every stroma of this, including cervix and any part of perineum, will be responsible for hormone. So they also will be positive. They'll be keratin negative, so you can rule out all the epithelial lesions, even if the cell looks epitheloid. They'll be ascendant negative. If it looks more spindly, you can look, rule out all the neural lesions also. Right? I have two important differential diagnoses for me here. The first important differential diagnosis, have you heard about a lesion called as an aggressive angiomyxoma? Okay. That's one of the most important differential diagnoses for me. I'll just erase this. There's a disease called as an aggressive angiomyxoma. Have you heard of them? That also happens in the perineal areas. That's one of the important differential diagnoses because of the prognosis. So tell me what are the pointers of an aggressive angiomyxomas compared to angiomyofibroblastomas. I'm not going with circumscription or size. Uh, that is, when you get, get a tiny biopsy, you cannot go with that. Aggressive angiomyxomas, my first thing is, there will be hypocellular regions. It will not be like your myofibroblastoma, where you have your uh, hyper and hypercellular areas. Right? It will be perfectly hypocellular areas. Uh, very, very rare spindle cells not like here because i don't have a myofibril bus it's an angiomyxoma right so i might have myxoma right i might have few stellate cells every myxoma wherever in the part of the body be it a cardiac myxoma here it's a myxoid predominant lesion cellularity will be very less might few might have the prolongation of a stellate cell right the most important thing is is angio the angio component will be very very predominant there will be thick vessels here also we saw quite a few areas where thick vessels, but uh, in predominantly in an aggressive angiomyxoma, there will be very very thick wall vessels. Here, uh, like some of you said that there are plexiform like areas, lots of capillaries, as well as big vessels. Here predominantly there will be thick vessels only, fine. Keep that in mind, your actin uh, might not help me, but the cellularity, the myxoid areas, the stellate cells will help me to uh, come to a conclusion. Some of, some time it might be very difficult to differentiate an angiofibroblastoma and aggressive angiomyxoma especially when the lesion is very very little if there's a big lesion it's very easy to pick up aggressive angiomyxoma little bit of your uh, pleomopsum also will be there right the second thing what i want you to remember have a differential diagnosis a simple fibroepithelial polyp fibroepithelial polyp is a skin tag right fibroepithelial or stromal polyp is a skin tag that's also common in your uh, perineal region. Right? Skin tags and fibroepithelial stromal polyp are common. Uh, first thing, all your fibroepithelial stromal polyp will be seen submucosal. The location. These are uh, below the cutaneous areas. They are in the perineum. It will not be in the vagina. It will not be submucosal. They are in the cutaneous areas. Right? Second, most important thing in fibroepithelial stromal polyp is you will have lots of bizarre stromal cells. Don't think them as a malignant. Bizarre stromal cells is a classical finding seen in the fibroepithelial pol stromal polyp, especially of the external genitalia. Keep that in mind. You will not have the collagen of your myofibroblastomas. Sorry, I'm hiding it. Uh, other IHCs, uh, definitely fibroepithelial stromal polyp will not be positive for your decimal because it's not having any muscle differentiation there. Fine. Okay. Fine. Okay, so I would think we will call it a day today. We have seen four cases. 
the first two were more of a like a spotter i was very very happy that you were able to pick up a fibrous hematoma of infancy quite a few of you so please do your homework we'll read and definitely we'll learn more together right and the first one if you if you uh, ignore them it's completely fine but myofibroblastoma and your angiomyofibroblastoma these are kind of spotters not just spotters in your routine practice also you might encounter them uh, don't mistakenly call them a malignant lesion just because there are more number of cells fine okay so to uh, next class will be next wednesday this wednesday i couldn't get a class apologies for that next wednesday we will continue with the fibroblastic lesion if you want to keep in touch and if you want to diagnose whenever i say something whenever i show you a case please go with who i am going in this almost the same order of who whatever i cases i have because if you read once and then attend the class it's going to be multiple times useful than just listening to the class right a little bit of effort and definitely help you in the long run okay thank you for that yeah do you have any doubts let me know if there are no doubts i will call it a day and if you're new here uh, this program for pathology postgraduates will happen mostly on wednesdays and saturdays whenever i have time uh, most of them will be on the anacademy app you can download the anamic academy app uh, in the below description and uh, you can use the code pathocups if you're not able to unlock any class all of them are special classes so it will be free for you guys fine uh, sure adil any doubt if i can solve it i'll be more than happy to solve it if i don't know i'll definitely read and come what is the doubt between crypt versus villi this is villi this is crypt no uh what is the doubt are there crypt versus villi villi are definitely the projections on the top crypt are definitely uh the invagination right Can you explain me exactly where you have the doubt? Uh, do you have? Uh, is the doubt about how to find a crypt and a villi? Because I'm not understanding the doubt. Can you rephrase it if, if possible? Okay, in a serrated adenoma, what is it about? You have a doubt between a crypt and a villi in a serrated adenoma? Okay, I'll try to explain a serrated adenoma. Uh, if that covers your doubt, I'll be more than happy. If not, do comment on the Telegram group what exact doubt is. Doubt is, I'll definitely try to help you. Fine. see uh, in a sesen serrated polypus serrated adenoma you will definitely have a villi and you'll definitely have a crypt see this is how a normal crypt was a villi looks right so this is how normal it looks when it goes to a serrated adenoma the villus will remain the same the only difference between a normal villus and a serrated adenoma villus will it'll have serrations right if you look at it it'll definitely have serrations like this I'm sure you, if you have seen a serrated adenoma, you will pick up a serration, right? So the villi will have little bit of serrations. Don't mistake serrations for uh, goblet cells. Whenever you are starting point, you might mistake serration for a goblet cell. There are clear pointers to differentiate serration. Was a was as a goblet cell invagination, fine. Right? Second, when I comment on the crypt of a serrated adenoma, a normal crypt will be perfectly like this. Will be perfectly bent. That's what you must have read in your histology, right? From your first year of MBBS, right? It'll be a perfectly U-shaped crib, but in a serrated adenoma, the crib becomes irregular. It might not be serrated; it's just it might have something a different shape, a T-shaped crib, a U-shaped crib. It'll not be perfectly U-shaped. That's all. It'll be distorted uh, your crib and eleven serrations in the villi. Fine. The reason being is simple. Uh, can you guys tell me where do you see serrated adenomas? 
or which mutation will result in the serrated adenomas? Just a theoretical standpoint of view. Anyone? It's a theoretical question. I'm sure you know that. Which mutations or it's a precursor lesion for which of the syndromes? Is it HNPCC or your uh, FAP? Serrated adenomas are more like a lesion seen in your methyl mismatch repair, right? MMRs, BRAF can be there and MMR mutations are the commonest one, right? So it is said that when I have a methyl mismatch repair defect, whenever there's lots of proliferation, right? Because only when there's more proliferation, there'll be more uh, mistake happening, more death happening, right? So it is said that normally a crypt is where I have stem cells, right? So these stem cells kind of proliferate more. Because what happens is, whenever there are proliferation happening, if the cell has a mutation, there's a chance of apoptosis, right? It proliferates more and it sends my cells to the top. After going to the top, let's assume I'm having good amount of cells here, good amount of cells here. My body realizes that this cell, what has come, has got a mutation, has got an error. Whenever I have a mutated cell, that undergoes apoptosis, right? So what happens is this tiny person goes off. When I'm going to have an apoptosis of that particular cell, will it look like a serration? Again, an apoptosis here. I'm having, sorry, I'm having cells here. Again, apoptosis here, cells here, apoptosis here, cells here. It will look like serrations, right? So this is exactly a serration of a serrated adenoma. The serrations are the cells which are lost during apoptosis, which are actually mutated cells which came from the crypt. My crypt realizes that there are lots of epithelial cells which are dying fast. So will crypt proliferate more in order to compensate? Once it proliferates, it will not be U-shaped, it will become weird shaped Because it has to proliferate more. It proliferates more and more to compensate the uh, epithelial loss, so it becomes weird. Fine. This is the reason of your serrated adenoma having serrations on the top and a crypt type, uh, distorted crypt architecture. Fine. Okay, hope uh, you were, your doubt got solved. If not, let me know. I'll try to uh, address your doubt if possible. Fine. Okay. Thank you for your time, everyone. Uh, very good night. See you. Bye-bye.